Biochemistry and Cell Organisation Task Book Video Mark Scheme and Commentary Question 5 in Membranes and Transport We've got a box to fill in and we are just ticking the appropriate boxes so no crosses here and we can just leave, leave them blank so that's our instructions and each statement could apply to one or more. So we could have one tick, we could have two ticks, we could have three ticks. In which material is going to enter a cell across a plasma membrane. And complete the table. Okay. So hopefully throughout this we are we've got our three types of transport. We're thinking about the structure of the membrane, uh, any proteins needed, any gradients and what we know about ATP. So substances dissolve in the lipid part of the membrane. Well in diffusion they have to because there's no proteins available. So it's just straight diffusion throughout the membrane and they'll dissolve in the lipid, yes. Here facilitated diffusion, no, because that's why they need help. Well, that's why they need it facilitating. Active transport, if they dissolve in the lipid part then it would uh, be with the gradient rather than against the gradient, so no there. Will not take place in the presence of cyanide. What's cyanide? Cyanide is a respiratory inhibitor and so with cyanide we'll get no ATP being produced. And which of these rely on ATP or active transport? So will not take place. So not that's our active transport. The movement involves membrane proteins. So diffusion was just through the membrane, no proteins. Facilitated diffusion usually involves a channel protein, active transport, a carrier protein. So we can have two ticks for that one. It does not require cell energy. This is going to be the, the opposite of the, the cyanide question really. So we're looking for diffusion. So diffusion there and facilitated diffusion, it's still that word diffusion, so it doesn't need energy. Active does need energy, so we'll leave that blank. The rate is proportional to the concentration gradient across the membrane. So concentration gradients, well that's what diffusion relies on. Here, facilitated diffusion, um, not quite sure. We could possibly say yes for that, although the mark scheme uh, leaves that blank. Um, it, it does rely on a concentration gradient, and I would suggest that if we've got a bigger gradient, maybe a faster rate, assuming there was enough uh, channel proteins for that, for that to happen. Due to random movement of molecules in the external solution. Well, diffusion relies on molecules um, colliding with each other and then spreading out, diffusing. That's where the diffusing comes from. So diffusion certainly. And again, um, possibly we could think yes there, although the mark scheme leaves it blank. Well, even facilitated diffusion will, will rely on uh, collisions between molecules. Active transport. Well, only collisions between the molecules and their carrier proteins, so not in the external solution. So maybe just diffusion for that. At very high external concentrations, the rate of the movement is constant. Well, diffusion, if we change the concentrations, it's always going to change the rate, so we can't have that. At very high, very high. So very high concentrations, our proteins are filled, or there's been as busy as possible, so we won't get any further increase in, in movement. So for facilitated diffusion and active transport, we're, we're limited by uh, the, the proteins that are available in the membrane, rather than the, the concentrations itself. Membrane proteins act as pumps. Well, pumps like bicycle pumps require energy, and so that's our active transport. Um, in diffusion, we haven't got a membrane anyway, we haven't got a protein anyway. And facilitated diffusion, well, it's diffusion, so it's not being pumped. 
So there's our, there's our table for 11 marks.